Hi everybody, my name is Lisa and this is video number two uh, in a series of a couple videos for our Spice Market um, project instruction sheet and that's from Cycale Enterprises. It features the Spice Market line of fabrics. This is our floral, it's got a Jacobean, and here's the basket print which is we're going to talk about this one today. Use it. Um, and then there's a really cool ethnic stripe. And then there's also a couple, actually there's three, um, there's another color of like blue or purple, um, little triangle prints, which you can use this in this quilt. I can see where it could just be used in a hundred other different projects as well because it's super versatile. It could go modern, it could go um, reproduction, just whatever fits into your style. So now that we've taken a look at the fabrics, let's go ahead and set those aside for just a second. And we are going to talk about today about these really great basket blocks. Actually, they're more like strips or borders almost, inside borders. So there's the long one, and then there's the short one. And there's a couple of tips that I can give to you. That's why we wanted to do the video, um, just to kind of give you something fun to look at as well. Sometimes, you know, project sheets are great, um, but sometimes having somebody sort of walk you through it and show you a couple of the finer points um, can be super helpful. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, and here's what I need you to do to start off with. Go ahead and take project sheet um, page number two, and you'll see down here this template. If you would, we need to have you either print out like six pages of the project, the page number two, or put it on your copier and just make six copies, okay? That way you won't have to destroy your original to where you can keep it for your instructions and stuff because it's kind of got the blow up of the how to piece the top of the quilt uh, inside the, the template there. So go ahead and make some copies and then I'm going to walk you through it and show you how, to, how you'll end up using each one of those. Once you've taken page two of the project sheet and made your extra six copies, what you'll want to do is go ahead and cut out each of the templates. You can take one of those. When you're cutting them out, just an extra tip would be to stay on the outside of the outside lines, the black lines, because if you tend to cut those black lines off, then your scissors can wander around a little bit and you'll lose the integrity of your template. Cut out one. You're going to use that to cut out your fabrics. You're going to cut out four of those from this quarter circle. All right, so that's the one. What you'll also want to do is take two of the other quarter circles, all right, and we'll take one of them. Basically what you're going to want to do is join the two of these together along their red lines. But because your photocopies are all facing the same direction, you kind of lose track when you flip the one over of how that goes together. What I did to help myself out is I just took it and folded it under the little bit that's along the red line. And then I could basically much, much easier to join my two red lines. You've got them there, right? So, once you've got them joined, then you can just take some tape, like a little scotch tape will hold it. And now you've got two quarter circles pasted together to make yourself a half circle template. And I want you to take those Right, so that's two of your quarter circles into a half circle. Take and use that to cut out eight half circles of your fabrics. Now, what are you going to do with all those other templates? What I would like for you to do is cut out you know, the three more quarter circles. Again, keep one whole, take two together. Once you've got all that taped together, I'll show you the difference. We're going to use these to cut out some freezer paper templates, basically. Um, so what we want to do is cut off this outer quarter of an inch seam line. I'll show you the difference. So basically, if you look at these two, you can see where this one here still has its full quarter inch seam line. This one, I have trimmed that off because we're going to use it to cut some freezer paper and we want to have that quarter of an inch seam line sticking out. I'll lay it down here so you guys can get a close up and see the difference, basically. You can see that the quarter of an inch is on this one. That's the one we're going to use to cut out our fabric. And then this one, the outer quarter of an inch uh, is missing. I've cut it off because I'm going to use it then to put with some freezer paper and I don't want that quarter of an inch on the freezer paper. I want it off so that I can use it and have my quarter of an inch fabric sticking out and to turn it off. You're going to take some just basic kitchen freezer paper from the grocery store, right? So, and then you're going to want to cut out four out of your one, just your quarter circle, cut out four pieces of freezer paper and then I want you to take your freezer paper and cut out eight 
of your half circle, right? What you'll end up doing with those, freezer paper basically has like a dull side, all right? And it has a shiny side, which has almost wax on it to it. And that side, if you put that down on fabric, you can actually iron it to fabric and it gives it just a little bit more stability and a nice fine edge to where we're going to use this edge to turn our edges over and get our seam allowances turned under. So, I've basically done that. Let me find the one. Here he is. Okay, so I took... I, I took the piece of fabric that I cut out with my bigger half circle, all right, with a quarter of an inch, and then I took a piece of freezer paper, all right, with the quarter inch taken off the outer edge, and I basically took my iron and fused the one to the other, all right? So I've got a piece of freezer paper fused onto that. So, and how does this help us? Well, what you can then do is if you have... Um, one of these little glue sticks or something similar, even an Elmer's glue stick will work, all right? And you can take it, and you don't need much, okay? Because eventually, later on, <clears throat> once we get this pressed and get our edge turned under, we're going to want to peel this piece of freezer paper off. So don't use all the glue in the world, and I'll show you here in a close-up. So but basically, just a tiny little bit, just a little dab will do you, right around the edge. And I have, I used to go ahead and put the glue on the fabric edge, but the one thing that you can end up doing that way is you'll end up with glue like all over your whole every surface in the world unless you put down a piece of scratch paper or something. And I realized at one point that if I would just go ahead and put my glue on the freezer paper, it'd be a lot easier. Okay, so, and then what you're going to do is see how you've got this extra lip of quarter inch of fabric sticking out. What you're wanting to do is now that you've got that glue on there, you're going to want to basically kind of turn that over. All right. You just kind of finger press it real easily. Press it down to get it mostly into place. And the glue is doing you a favor because it's going to hold it for you right there, okay? Still not completely fused down or even or whatnot. So what we're going to do is now we can take our iron and you can basically just use your iron and you can kind of just nudge that into place. And basically you're wanting to nudge it around the circle and end up with really, really smooth, smooth edges. If you end up with any, any little pointy guys, that'll tend to show up when you go ahead and turn it. That's not what we're looking for at all. Okay. So you're using that glue. You've got this nice sharp edge of the freezer paper, which is going to help you get a nice even quarter of an inch turned over. Okay. Got a little example right there. Sometimes if you get a little carried away and don't get the quarter edge, quarter turned under, you can end up with a little, almost what I call a spiky. Okay. And one way to test that, then, is to kind of hold it up, and you can see, hold it up against the light, and you can see if you've got any little pointy things, pointy fellas, you know, along the top there. And if you do, then you just kind of peel them up a little bit, and then just kind of smooth it out a little bit, and then go back and take your iron and hit it again. Okay? So, now you've got, you've got a nice quarter of an inch, yeah, quarter of an inch turned under. And what you can then do, there's your quarter circle, then you just take and separate the two, all right, peel your paper off, and you will end up with, there's your quarter, okay, a little nice quarter inch turned under, and here's a couple, there are your half circles, okay. You can see that once you tear your paper off and once you've separated that seam, it tends to come up just a little bit. So if you want to, you can take your iron one more time and just, now that that line has been established, just kind of follow it again and convince it to lay down a little bit more, okay. You just want a nice, crisp, clean line because here's what you're going to want to do. So as a part of your cutting instructions, you cut out... Um, basically four pieces of your black batik. They're long strips, sort of rectangles, all right? You take your two shorter ones, and what you'll need to do is take two of your quarter circles, put one at one end and one at the other end. Now, how are you placing those? And this is really the key and the tip for the video, all right? So, normally you might think that you might offset that by a quarter of an inch, okay? But in this case, what you want to do is take your quarter circle, and you want its edges and the edges of the strip to come out completely to one another, and I'll show you why in just a second. So, essentially make these corners match, all right? Now, you are leaving a quarter of an inch up here because when you 
join your border to the next long strip, you're going to want it to turn out to look like this, where you've got your seam, okay, and you've just joined the strips to each other, the border strips to one another, but it kind of meets up nice and evenly with that turned under edge that we've done, okay? So you're going to place your quarter squares on either end, and you're going to match up the corners and the edges, and then you'll take one of your half circles and you put it in the middle. Now, what you need to do and pay most attention to, this is not a hard and fast measurement here in the middle. These two, you'll see there's a little bit of a space between the quarter circles and the half circles. It doesn't have to be, you know, hugely mathematical or rocket science or anything. Just make sure that it's even, okay? You've got an even amount. And once you've done that, pin those into place firmly and you can see it's up to you at that point how you do it. Some people might prefer a little finer look and they might want to hand stitch or whip stitch or um, hand applique those into place. Um, I just went ahead and applicated it with just uh, just a tiny little bit, you know, like a little eighth of an inch or less from the edge of it, with just a straight line. You could also do a blanket stitch or an applique stitch or just whatever, you know, look prefer you prefer. Um, I use contrasting thread, thread so that you guys could kind of see it a little bit, um, but you might want to use, you know, a thread that blends in or you could use some kind of, you know, fun color, maybe even variegated thread would be super cool. So that's how your short strip ends up, all right? And then to make your long strip, there are no quarter circles on it. You'll want to do all half circles, all right? And when you do those, here's the thing with those. You do, now on your quarter circles, you brought them out all the way fully to the edge. But on these half circles, you see how there's a quarter of an inch there? You're going to want to leave a quarter of an inch at the end, okay, for a seam, so that once the seam is turned, then your circle is at the very edge. I'll show you the other end as well. Same situation. On both ends of your longer strip, don't put your full circles all the way out to the edge because you want to leave on this instance and when they go together, I'll show you in just a second, you'll want to leave that quarter of an inch so that they'll match together properly, all right? And same scenario up here, same deal. You're going to want to leave this quarter of an inch at the top so that when you turn your seam allowance, um, then your edges of your half circles will be right at the edge of your seam. Now, uh, also the same situation. Uh, it doesn't have to be super mathematical what the distance is between these because if you turned under a a little bit more generous of a quarter of an inch. It may vary a tiny bit, but just make sure that whatever this space in here is and whatever that space in there is, that they're the same as each other so that everything looks even. Okay, so now why did we go all to all of those great lengths? Well, let me show you. I'm going to put these together for just a second so that you'll get the story. Okay, so if you pretend that you're going to sew these together and let's pretend that we're turning this under so you've got a quarter of an inch. If I'm going to turn that under a quarter of an inch, I'm going to lay this together, how they will go together once they're sewn. And I'll hold it up so you can see it, and then I'll lay it back down so you can also see it in detail. The reason that we wanted to bring the quarter circles all the way to the end is so that when these go together, you can see all of the fabrics match up and you're not ending up with any loose, raggy edges, okay? You can also see that we offset these half circles by the quarter of an inch because we needed it to match the offset that's right here where the quarter circle is on its longer edge. All right, so I'm going to lay that down here. Let's get rid of our little pressing board. I'm going to lay that down here so you guys can see it as well. I'll put it into a close-up for you. So just imagine once you've sewn it, essentially, what you're wanting to have happen They'll end up going together like this. And so basically, you don't have a raggy edge here. If you had if you had offset this quarter of an inch and not gone all the way in, then you'd end up with a ragged edge here, and that's not what we're looking for at all. So that's the reason that this goes all the way out to the end so that when you turn into your quarter and sew your borders and start piecing together your top, then it'll end up nicely and you'll end up with a nice joined seam here. And you'll see how it almost looks like a basket. With If you look, picture your center block that we talked about in video number one, um, you'll picture your center block there. Uh, you can see it almost looks like there's a basket laying there underneath. And all you're seeing is about, you know, the three quarters of it. And then also you can see, because we offset this quarter of an inch on your half uh, circles, and then this was offset because it's offset from the longer edge, then they match up with one another. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. There was a video number one. If you didn't, uh, haven't watched it yet, go ahead and watch it. because It'll give you some really great tips on how to piece the center square, which is this one over here. So check that out. And uh, thanks for checking in and listening to our videos. And happy sewing.